The question I want to be able to answer by the end of this video is, is this a suitable Unify alternative? The Cisco Meraki Go lineup markets itself as a small business network solution. Although this has been out for a little while now, let's take a look at the lineup of products they have to offer, what we'll be looking at in this video, and finally, how easy it is to get it set up and configured. Firstly, their lineup is really simple. They have Wi-Fi access points, network switches, and security gateways. For the security gateways, there's only one product. This is the GX20. This product comes in at £105 in the UK and $128 in the US. The links are in the description below to my Amazon affiliate, so if you want to check them out, they're in there. Next, we have the Wi-Fi access points. Again, very simple and easy choice. They have an indoor access point and an outdoor access point, so you choose either one or the other. The indoor model is the GR10 and it's $105 in the US and £95 in the UK. The outdoor model is the GR60 and that comes in at $143 in the US. And for some reason, it doesn't seem to be showing on the Amazon UK store, but I've put a link into an alternate supplier anyway. And finally, the switches. They come in both PoE and non-PoE versions. There are eight, 24 and 48 ports available. I won't go into the price of all of these, but if you want, the links again are in the description below. But I will say for the one that we're using in this video is the eight port PoE. That is $235 in the US and £194 in the UK. And just for completeness, the model number of this is the GS110. Now we have taken all that information in, the lineup is very simple and easy. You don't have loads of different options to choose from, neither do you need to navigate through them and understand what each of them do. Let's go ahead now and have a look at the units themselves and the specifications. So in front here we have the Cisco gateway. If we have a quick look inside the box here, so you can see there's just a, a welcome or a logo, gives you the terms and warranty. And underneath here you have your power cable, ethernet cable, and some screws if you want a wall mount. And yeah, that's it. So it comes with two ethernet cables inside. So just want to have a quick look at the, the actual unit itself. So there's a light on the front. On the back you've got two wall mounting or you can keep it on a desk if you want to put it there and then the main bit is this at the back so we have a usb port we have a wan port and then you have four gigabit ports now this last port here is actually poe so it's 802.3 af and you can actually power something through that port as well and then you've got your power connection here then next we have the eight port gateway so again inside here you've got your power um, for which we'll take out in a minute and you have your switch so again fairly fat it's fanless so this switch is fanless as well um, let's just have a quick look at the front so you've got a reset pin just here by the looks of it you've got eight gigabit ethernet ports and two sfp uplink ports so just these are sfp not sfp plus so the max uh, uplink speed you will get is one gigabit on the back you have some wall mounts um, and again if you want to keep it on your desk you can do and at the back you have a lock so if you have a Kensington lock or any other brand of lock you can use here and you can power it through here as well. So yeah again fairly small light compact for your switch. So last but not least we have the uh, wireless access point so let's just open this up quickly open that one up a bit wrong so this is the access point again Cisco branding on the front on the back you've got the wall mount so if you want to mount it somewhere so let's have a quick look at how to take this off so to take this off you just pull it down I'm trying to do this struggling but there you go so that's on here it looks like what we've got on the back of here what depending on the kind of wall mount you've got you can use different types of uh, different holes uh, again you have the Wi-Fi access point so we have an Ethernet port here and we have the power connection just here. So this access point is uh, 802.11 AC wave 2. It does both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz um, radio frequencies and the port on the back is a gigabit port. So there we go, these are the three items just here. You've got your switch, you've got your Wi-Fi access point and your security gateway. So to get these connected up I'm going to plug the security gateway into the switch and then the access point into the switch. 
So let's just quickly go ahead and set that up, get that powered on and we'll see what that looks like. So you download the app. So this looks like it's an in-app setup. So we download the app and we click login. So we don't already have the um, Meraki login. So I'm gonna go off now and quickly register my account. So once you've filled in your details and you've picked your region, um, you need to accept the terms and conditions. So it's not gonna let you click accept unless you scroll all the way down to the bottom. So there we go, click accept. And then we would click create account. There we go. So we need to then go off and verify your email. Now that my email has been verified, I can go off and log in now. So we click login. So now that we've logged in, we can now go ahead and start scanning our hardware in. So we can unbox it, click next to scan your hardware. It's going to come up with a camera and then it's going to ask you to scan the QR code. So we're just going to quickly go off and do that one second. So then it'll ask you to name the hardware. So this is the um, security gateway. So we're just going to call it gateway for now. And we click save. Review the scanned hardware. So let's have a quick look. So then it's telling you to plug it in. So we click next. It's telling you step by step. So as I showed you a little bit earlier, it says you need to connect up your uh, gateway to the internet. So we've gone off and done that and powered it up. So we next click connect and upgrade. So it's gonna go off and do that now. So let's go ahead and click get notified. So we can run through the setup still while that's setting up. So we can click get notified. We wanna enable push notifications and click allow. Might be slightly different on an Android phone, but here you can set up what notifications you want. So you can have the hardware offline for more than five minutes. You can either have an email or push. Next is the total usage exceed of a limit. So you can set this up for an email notification. So if you're running data caps, you can put that on here and you can get guest statistics every week. So if you generally have a lot of guests that connect to your network, then maybe you wanna set this up as well. Next is multi-factor authentication. We're seeing a lot of these now. There's a lot of people that are using authentication, uh, two-factor authentication. It's something I would highly recommend you set up. So let's go ahead and run through this. So let's click download an auth app. It's gonna take me to Google Authenticator. I already have that, so we click open. So we can go ahead and click next to set up multi-factor authentication. We can add the app. Uh, no, we don't wanna open that one. So we can click add the Mero key go. So I'm just gonna do this manually, enter a setup key, type in the key, and we're gonna put in Cisco. Click add, and we now have the Cisco on here as well. So we can verify the two-factor authentication. So it says to type in the six digits from there. So let's go back across, copy, uh, gotta be quick because the time was running out and paste, there you go, it worked. And it's as simple as that to set up two-factor authentication. So we click enable. So now our account is enabled with two-factor authentication. So there's a bunch of backup codes that are shown here. Uh, it's slightly blurred out at the moment, obviously for security reasons, but you can keep these safe and if you ever lose your multi-factor authentication, this is another way for you to get back in. So we just copy that and keep it somewhere safe and click finish. And there we go. So we have this set up here. So this is the app itself. If I go to hardware, you can see the gateway is currently offline and we click networks. We don't have any Wi-Fi networks created. Let's give this a few minutes, let it set up. It says it does take up to 30 minutes. So let's let this go off and set up. And once it's ready, I will come back and continue. Next, we're going to go off and scan the other two pieces of hardware. So the QR codes on the back. So we'll start with the switch. We'll quickly scan the QR code on that. So there we go. We now just need to name it. And yeah, this is a network switch. So we're just gonna call this switch, save. And we wanna review the scanned hardware. So it says 10 ports, so that's eight gigabit ports and two SFP ports. Uh, next, we plug in the hardware. So the hardware is already plugged in, so we can click next. And there we go, that is now finished. So if we quickly go to hardware now, it's showing us offline. You obviously it goes through the whole process of getting set up. The gateway is now online. And the last thing we're gonna add is the Wi-Fi access point. So let's quickly go off and do that. So there we go, that's the access point. So we just click name it again. And we're just gonna call this access point one, click save, and let's review the scan hardware. So again, indoor access point, plug in the hardware. Again, it's already plugged in, so we can go ahead and leave that. So it's basically saying on this page that you can get your internet access via plugging it in via ethernet cable, which is what we've done or if there is already a wireless access point on the network, you can connect it via mesh. So you can link one to the other wirelessly. We click next and finish. Now the three devices we have are all set up and ready to go. So again, we'll leave it for a couple of minutes. We'll let that go off, get set up, get it configured. 
and then when we come back we'll have a look through the app and see what else there is. Now all of the three devices are online. This does take a little bit of time, so I would say be patient, let it continue. It will eventually get there. So it did take a little bit longer than I anticipated, but we're there anyway. So let's have a quick run through the app, shall we? So let's look at home. We can have a quick look on the front. So this is showing all the networks for the past weeks, past week, sorry. We've got two unique devices. Um, it's showing how much usage, internet usage you, you, you are using at that point. Um, the application itself, any applications, high, high utilization applications will come up here. Uh, it's showing data and available because I've just set this up, so there's nothing there to show. So then let's move on to networks. So we've not created a Wi-Fi network yet, so let's go and let's create a Wi-Fi network. So we're gonna call this, um, let's just call this home for now, password. Let's just pop that in there we go and we're not calling this a guest network so we're leaving it as it is so we click go and there we go it's as simple as that to create a wi-fi network so let's have a quick look inside and see what there is um, some of the settings we can look at so on here password so if there's a landing page if you need your visitors so this will be for your guests you can create a, uh, a landing page for them uh, network availability so you can set up scheduling here so you can turn your network down at certain points so again if, if you have your kids on the network and you want to be able to um, turn off the wi-fi at certain points this is where you would set that up uh, web blocking so if you want to block specific content on this network so any um, url specifically um, it doesn't have any filtering options for example adult content or gambling websites or whatever it is there doesn't, there doesn't seem to be anything for that but you can block specific URLs if you want. Usage limit, so if you want to set any usage limits here you can just click the plus sign and then you can do it by category globally for home or just for specific devices however you want to set that up. So this isn't an in-depth tutorial I'm just quickly running through how to get this set up and then if you want to see more let me know down in the comments below of what you'd like to see. Um, VLAN tagging, radio, uh, the radio, so where you can set this up to five gigahertz, uh, 2.4 gigahertz, or both. It's entirely up to you. And there we go, that's the settings. So that's, that's how you would connect to the home network. I'm just gonna quickly attempt to connect to that network. So at the moment, if I just go to network preferences, and if we have a quick look, you can see there's home now. It's going to ask for the password and there we go it's picked up an IP address and there we are we're, we're connected onto that network so again yeah it's as simple as that to get that up and running. Let's go back to the screen then so that was the network setup as we showed earlier the hardware it's all there it's online we're happy um, then we go to the settings so let's have a quick look at the settings here. So going from the top you have what's new um, so it would just show some of the new updated features within um, the application and the online controller. Wi-Fi network, so just what we went into earlier, it's the same thing, it's just another place to access it. Guest insights, so if you've set up a guest network, you can again show all your trends and see what's happening on within your guest networks. And if you want to block any clients off the network, so via IP, MAC address, or even specific OSs, if you don't want that on your network, you can block them. Web blocking, again, you've got your filtering, so you can do this everywhere or only on the home network, for example, that, as I've created. And usage limits, is, again, is exactly the same. You then have your accounts, notification settings that we ran through at the setup at the start, and admins. If you wanna add other admins in, you have this just here. You can add any specific admins, just press the plus button and you can invite them to be an admin. Okay, multi-factor authentication. So if you actually wanna turn this off or you wanna, if you wanna turn this off or disable it, you can do that just here. Then if you're having any trouble, you can contact support via here, type in the subject, not done it before, so I don't know whether it's a live chat, just a forum, not quite sure. Uh, you can go to the community and ask them and you can make a wish. So if there's something that you wanna see on these devices or within the network, you can click click on this and make the suggestion. Uh, you can choose between light and dark theme. Then you've got the advanced settings here, so wireless address translation mode, so you can go into home, and it will tell you whether you want a bridge or NAT. It's entirely up to you. We're going into something a bit more technical, but it does break down exactly what each of those do. Um, and then you've got stealth mode, so you can turn off all the LEDs, um, and then if you wanna, if it's somewhere where it might be distracting, I don't know, for example, if it's in your office and it's on the shelf and you can see the lights blinking at you, um, that's something you can turn off just there. You've got software updates, you can set specific time 
for when you want the software updates to happen. Uh, mesh settings, so if you want to enable meshing of the access points, you can do that. Uh, local address network settings, and last but not least, port forwarding. So if you have any port forwarding rules that you need to do, you can do that within here. So overall, the app is fairly simple and easy to set up. It's just a case of scanning the QR code and away you go. You can log into the gateway and the access point just via IP as well. So I want to quickly show you, there isn't really a lot in here. Um, but you can see that we can go straight in, you'll see the connection we have, uh, your IP address, you can run speed tests, uh, you can configure it, there's a bit of configuration you can do here, you can use VLAN tagging, what type of connection you got, direct or PPoE, and the DHCP if you it's using DHCP to get its IP address. Um, you can then have a look at the Ethernet side of things, so this is on the back of the security gateway, one is already enabled because you need that for your internet connection, but you can enable and disable the other ports if you want to as well. Uh, the access point itself, there isn't really too much on here. So you've got an uplink configuration, again, just DHCP. You can adjust your pa um, channels and power for radio. Uh, you can adjust the w uh, your web proxy on here. You can have a look at what neighbors are around. So you can basically make sure you're not using the same channel. And same again, you can sort of get your IP address on here. You can see what the bitrate signal's like and what the details are down below. So there you go, that's, that's this all in a nutshell. Again, if there is anything specific you wanna see, let me know down in the comments below and I'll see if I can put a tutorial together for it or a how-to guide. Also, let me know your comments about what you think about Cisco's unit, whether you feel that it's an appropriate alternative solution. For me, I think the I think this, this unit is very adequate for small businesses and even a home. Uh, as for it being a suitable alternative to Unify, yes, it's very simple and easy to set up. The choices aren't as big. So yes, if you're looking for something simple and easy and just want to plug in a few access points, then yeah, this is for you. It's definitely an alternative to Unify. I haven't done a direct price comparison, but I think this would come in a little bit cheaper than your standard Unify setup. Just before we do finish here though, there is one more thing I want to mention to you. The Meraki Cisco Go unit comes with a security features built into it. So it has a stateful firewall, DHCP services, port forwarding, uh, client connectivity alerts and web blocking as you can see on the screen. There is also an additional optional security subscription that you can buy as well. Now, this isn't really cheap. It comes in a yearly subscription. It is, I believe, it's more than $100 uh, a year in terms of subscription, but what that then gives you is more content filtering, um, anti-malware and anti-phishing, and C2C callbacks. So you got to see from your business perspective whether you feel that is justifiable for the additional um, security features that this offers. I hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments below if you've liked what you've seen, whether you would use the Cisco in your setup. Also, there are a bunch of other suppliers that are Unify alternative. There are a few more out there on the market, so let me know in the comments below. All the products used in this video are in the description below. They are linked to my Amazon affiliate account, so if you do use them, they do help me out. Anyway, for now, this is Inside Wire. I'll see you in the next one.